Peter Lynch became one of the most famous investors in the world in the early 1980s, after he took over the Fidelity Magellan Mutual Fund in May of 1977, which were of $20 million. Between 1977 and 1990, he outperformed the market by 29% returns per year. You are watching the channel Money Base, and in today's video, we explain Peter Lynch's investment strategy. But before we hop into the details, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends and family. Peter Lynch firmly believes that individual investors have inherent advantages over large institutions because the large firms either won't or can't invest in smaller cap companies that have yet to receive big attention from analysts or mutual funds. Therefore, whether you are a registered representative looking to find solid long-term picks for your clients or an individual investor striving to improve your returns, Lynch has an investment strategy that will guide both. Number 3 only buy what you understand. Once his stellar track record running the Magellan Fund gained the widespread attention that usually follows great performance, Lynch wrote several books outlining his philosophy on investing. In his book, the core thesis includes investing in stocks that you can understand. According to Lynch, our greatest stock research tools are our five senses and common sense. He is proud of the fact that many of his great stock ideas were discovered while walking through the grocery store or chatting casually with friends and family. He says that each individual is capable enough to do first-hand analysis of every situation, such as mundane things like watching TV, reading the newspaper, or listening to the radio. It can even be conducted while driving or walking down the street, or traveling on vacation in order to fish out brilliant and unique investment ideas. This is because consumers represent two-thirds of the gross domestic product of the United States. In layman's terms, most of the stock market is in the business of serving you, meaning that as an individual consumer, if something attracts you as a customer, it should also pique your interest as an investment. Number 2. Always do your homework First-hand observations and anecdotal evidence are a great start for an investment, but all great ideas need to be followed up with smart research. Peter Lynch's homespun simplicity indicates that doing diligent research is a must as rigorous research results in finding a good amount of information and serves as a cornerstone of success. When following up on the initial spark of a great idea, Lynch highlights several fundamental values that he expected to be met for any stock worth buying. Percentage of Sales if there is a product or service that initially attracts you enough to invest in the company, make sure that it comprises a high enough percentage of sales to be meaningful. An excellent product that only makes up 5% of sales isn't going to have more than a marginal impact on the company's bottom line. PEG Ratio This ratio of valuation to earnings growth rate should be thoroughly examined to see how much expectation is built into the stock. You want to seek out companies with strong earnings growth and reasonable valuations. A strong grower with a PEG ratio of 2 or more has that earnings growth already built into the stock price, leaving little room for error. Favor companies with strong cash positions and below average debt to equity ratios. Strong cash flows and prudent management of assets give the company options in all types of market environments. Number 1 invest for the long run. Lynch said that with the absence of surprises, most stocks are stable and relatively predictable over 10 to 20 years. As to whether they're going to be higher or lower in two or three years, you might as well flip a coin to decide. His words may be a little surprising, but they highlight his philosophy. He has an in-depth knowledge of the companies he owns. Lynch didn't try to market time or predict the direction of the overall economy. In fact, Lynch once conducted a study to determine whether market timing was an efficient strategy. According to the results of his study, if an investor had invested $1,000 a year on the absolute high day of the year for 30 years from 1965 to 1995, that investor would have earned a compound return of 10.6% for the 30-year period. If another investor also invests $1,000 a year every year for the same period on the lowest day of the year, this investor will earn a return of 11.7% compounded return over the 30-year period. 
Therefore, after 30 years of the worst possible market timing, the first investor only trailed in his returns by 1.1% per year. If you like this video, then make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos in the future. Also, hit the bell icon to stay up to date and be the first one to watch our latest videos.